So welcome back friends. I have been looking forward to this video. Today we're gonna to be testing the cheapest chainsaw on Amazon. Let's take a look inside. It is hard to believe that you can buy a gas powered chainsaw for what, just over a hundred dollars. <laughs> I have used a lot of chainsaws in my life. I'm uh, Husqvarna and Steel and Johnsard and Home Light and Polin and, and you name it, but I have never tested an off brand of, of saw. I have no idea what to expect. So today, so we'll, let's just do a quick, what in the world is that? A quick unboxing here. And we actually have a big tree to take down and we'll see, there's the chain, we'll see how it does. 22 inch bar, extreme power, US, US extreme power. Man, oh man, there's an instruction manual. We've got a scratch tool, or we've even got some, some log dogs on there. Let's, let's take a look, see what the uh, initial impressions are here. And we'll put it all together. <laughs> okay, so what do we have here? So we've got a, uh, you know, I would say it's it's on the small, definitely on the smaller side, but uh, pretty much what we'd expect here. We've got, uh, of course, you know, on our, we've got a, <clears throat> looks like an aluminum or a magnesium housing. The side plate cover here is plastic. We've got a chain brake. This, this doesn't feel too bad. We've got our bar oiler up front here. We've got gas in the back. I don't know what that is. We've got an off and on toggle. And we've got a choke. It says here, do not use pure gasoline. Okay, we'll have to figure out what the mix in. So this is guide bar 22 inch, eight power 1800 W. What does that mean? So here are the accessories that it came with. It looks like it's got, it uh, looks like it's a 140 to one. 41, this, is, this was here is for mixing. Came with a little scrunch tool. Pretty light duty everything here, but man, $100. I mean, every, everyone should have a chainsaw around, even, you know, I mean, around here, guys carry them in their, uh-oh, uh what's this what's all about here? They carry them in our trucks in case, because we live in the, what, what in the world is that? Is that the adjust, that must be the tension adjuster. How do you get this thing off? It should come off of there. Uh, we're gonna have to read the instructions. Good grief. Oh, there we go. Okay, you gotta take the, oh, that's simple. Look at that. So this is kind of like, uh, is this maybe more like Husqvarna? So the brake is actually in the side plate. That's not, the most robust way to do it. There's our chain tensioner. So we can see, I'll bet if we turn that screw right there, what do you want to bet? Turn that screw, that is going to adjust the chain. That is uh, a little bit anemic, but this is, at least the chain adjuster there is metal. We've got a rub, little rub deal there. We've got a little, <laughs> look, how, look how flimsy that is. Little flimsy uh, chip deflector there. And this is all plastic, but that's, so we've got our clutch on the outside, and then we've got a sprocket. This is, that whole housing is all, all looks like aluminum or magnesium or something. Uh, we can even adjust the oil. The mixture of, right there, looks like that's the oiler on how much oil we turn out. So well, let's put the chain on. We don't wanna put the chain on backwards. Oh, that feels pretty chintzy, but you can get it tight. All right, we messed up. We got to put look at the look at that man. That's a pro, pro, professional size of log dogs there. Let's compare that to the still. Here you go. <laughs> not quite, the, not quite, the, not quite the same. I got to pull the bar back off because I forgot. We got to put those things on first, and then we can tighten up the bar and see if it starts. Here's something I just noticed. See any problem with the file? See any issues there? Nah. Here we go, let's fuel it up. Okay, so I'm not gonna mix up 
I am not going to mix up a whole another gallon of uh, 35 to 1. What I will do is I'll, I'm going to put 50 to 1 in here and then I'll just give it a little bit of extra, a little dollop of oil to make that a bit richer. You know, this is not, if you go a little bit either way, it's not really, well, it's probably not really the end of the world. So we've got some two stroke oil here and we'll just give it a smidge more there, a little bit, run it a little bit rich. So the manual said it recommended using 1040 motor oil. The, the plastic on the, on the filler caps is really actually quite, it doesn't feel very nice. It feels kind of brittle, but it, do, it is captured and the oil tank there is metal. Some real oil. And that's always a very common question uh, from guys is, can I, hey, can I just run, bar oil is expensive. Look at that, I'm spilling it. Bar oil is expensive. Can I just run used motor oil in there or just clean motor oil because it's cheaper than bar oil? Uh, well, yeah, of course you can. It's better than nothing. I wouldn't recommend using the motor oil because it has so much, uh, so many contaminants in it. That's a big oil tank for such a small saw. So many contaminants in it that it, uh, it can wear out stuff and clog up your oiler. And it's, you know, it's just not worth the aggravation. Um, 1040 would be better, you know, new oil. Problem with that is the, is the stickiness of oil. So if you take bar oil, for example, like this, look how stringy it is. See this, how stringy and sticky it is there? Well, that's re required or recommended so that it sticks onto the bar so it's not all flung off the end. Um, and that it, it sticks and hangs out on the bar. All right, everything adjusted, everything filled up, ready to go. Chain brake should be forward. All right, can we lock the throttle? No throttle lock? Hmm, that's interesting. Looks like there was a place for, for it. They changed their mind, so we've got to stop. So we've got the ignition on, the choke out. Well, let's just see what happens here. Don't know how it's going to start without a throttle lock on it. Back to the manual. So the manual doesn't say anything about having it to... Usually at a saw you have something that holds the throttle open halfway position or so. But this doesn't have it. I mean you could... There's a hole there. I could like stick the file in there and do it. I just, I just have never seen a saw that, uh, maybe that's why the file's bent there. The file's bent there a little, got a little crooked it so you can poke it in there and jam the throttle open. <laughs> Let's see, I'm gonna try it. Ah, there you go. <laughs> so you do have to have the throttle open, but then the file fell out. Uh, see if it'll go now there. Well, I hate to do this, it's dangerous, but. Okay, try the file trick again. We need that to stay open a little bit. Come on! <laughs> Sounds pretty good actually. We've got a grand fur. It may not look very big. It's pretty good size. Probably three feet there at the base. We've got a. It's a kind of a twin, a split tree, but it has it has died last year, and it's starting to rot. So it needs to come down. Probably 100 feet tall or so, and it'll be too big for the bar. This 22-inch bar to reach both sides. So we'll have to come at it from two sides. It'll be a good test. A challenging tree to take down because of the lean. This will give you a little bit better scope of the size of it. It's reasonably big. You know, we can't cut all the way through with the bar, but 
don't let anybody tell you you can't take down large trees with a small saw. You can, it just uh, just takes a little, you gotta come at it from both sides. It's not a, not a big deal. So the question is, is it gonna start? Well, that did not go well. That tree completely surprised me. Just when you think you got it all figured out, you get something like that. So I was wrong. This is not a grand fir. This is a dug fir. I could tell by the needles here now that I look closer at it in the branch configuration. What happened with that was the center was all rotten. And I was really, I was leaving my hinge wood in the center for that. But right where those two things, true trees had grown together, I don't know if water or decay or something got in there and rotted out all the center of that. So when I cut, I didn't have any holding wood in there. And that's why when I started wedging it, you see that it, instead of having that holding wood and falling over where I want it to go, it just rotated on the stump and actually fell over 90 degrees, 110 degrees, the wrong direction, right towards me. <laughs> so that shows the importance of having a, an escape route and kind of a plan and not losing your head when those things happen. Because you have a few seconds to react. And if you can keep your head about you, when things don't go as planned, you can get out of it. You know, the tree, the tree is gonna move and it's gonna you know, start doing things. And you have, you know, if you're right at the stump, you're only, two steps away from a safe direction where the farther you get away from the tree you know the more you have to run so that uh, interesting that one there was that wasn't good either i had all that rock going on and almost no holding wood on the other side and um and the wind starting to pick up and blow in the wrong direction it was sitting back hard on the wedges but uh all's well that ended well though that was exciting lesson learned on those double trees like that i don't think i've ever cut one that way where I've tried to uh, take it at so close to the crotch. Uh, if I were to do that again, I would either one, go lower and do a Humboldt cut. I don't usually do a Humboldt cut with this because it's just easier to kind of demonstrate for the video. I do a Humboldt cut and then come back in there where I know that wood was solid or go up higher and fall, fall, or cut them two individually, which might be a, a, a better bet. But, uh, oh, I got caught up in the excitement there. So, the saw is actually, the saw is really good. Uh, it's really good. It's got, it's got, um, it's a tiny little saw, but it's got good power, really good power. Uh, and it got the job done right there. I had some issues with uh, the fuel uh, sideways. And what happened, you, I think right about when I got down to about a quarter of a tank of fuel or so, maybe half a tank, that it was a little bit fussy, that it didn't want to pick up fuel. I'd have to kind of pull it out, bring it upright, run up the throttle, and then it would go again. And then uh, it, it, it did act up a little bit, but it didn't act up once I refueled it, it worked fine on its side. Uh, so I think that it might be the way that the pickup is designed, but it's a it's a real chainsaw. It actually really works. It's, uh, I, I can't believe it. I really can't believe it. I was expecting this to be kind of a joke and for it to catch on fire or, <laughs> do some stupid thing or melt but it hasn't overheated the ergonomics are uh, on it are are decent i mean it's 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 what you'd expect for a hundred dollars it's it's more than you'd expect for a hundred dollars actually um it's got metal in the places that 
that require it. The, the, the brake, uh, the handle, the wrap, the, it starts very consistently uh, being a brand new saw. Uh, the chain tensioner seems to work. The, the chain is not the best. It's a, it's a real low end chain, but, but you know that could be remedied with a, a USA built chain. But I mean, it's, it's a real chainsaw. It really, really is. There's, there you have it, you know, and it's not the saw's fault that I botched that tree up so bad, but, um, but all's well that ends well, right? So that's it. You can, what's the conclusion? You can get a real chainsaw for a hundred dollars <laughs> on Amazon. So I'll put, uh, if you want to look at one of these or you're interested in having just a cheap backup saw or just maybe just a, you don't use a saw all the time. Yeah, maybe it'd be a good option for you, but I'll put a, a Amazon affiliate link there in the, in the subject heading. I think it was a hundred and eleven dollars but to be honest with you i'll put this on the rotation uh i'll put this off keep it gassed up and sharpened up and ready to go if i be you know maybe this is a saw that i keep in my truck you know where i wouldn't feel so bad if wouldn't feel near as bad if someone stole this versus one of the pro steel saws um i'll i'll cut some firewood with it you know put a few few tanks through it see how it holds up but uh it's actually quite a it's quite a good little saw it really really is all right well thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video